In this video, we're going to take a look at the new wireless gaming mouse from Ponage being the Stormbreaker. And we're going to take a deep dive of this. Me being a big Ergo fan, I'm going to really be able to give you some solid feedback of an Ergo mouse user. And then, of course, a bunch of comparisons. And then again, breaking this down, is this worth a pickup for your collection? Now, first off, what you get in your box, of course, you get your mouse. And you know old technique. We got the black, white, and red one here, which is absolutely gorge. Now, you get your grips, one and two, and then your sides, which we're going to talk about why I got these installed here you get your paperwork your usb cable your little dongle i guess we call this the pyramid here and then you get a screwdriver which we're going to talk more about that as well now, i'm not going to waste your time harping on specs so i'm just going to leave them on the left side of the screen you can look over while i talk about a couple things here to kick it off number one i want to talk about the screwdriver here which by the way is one of these ones where you can just spin off the top you got a phillips spin off the other side and you're going to have a flat head right there and what that's for is the sensor movement right here now i don't know if the camera can pick this up let me pull it up get some focus you can see the two notches below where i have it currently screwed in because again you can move the sensor to the front or the back again some of that can go into aim myself i noticed that being more into weight i could notice the weight more than the adjustment of the sensor as far as flicking and stuff like that so i first thought it would have to go towards the back a little bit the thing I want to point out here is I tighten mine a little bit much, not the grooves, but you can see the plastic flare out a little bit. And then it kind of catches if you want to pull it back a little bit. Now, you're not going to be moving this constantly. You're not. But again, myself thinking it would have to go back, I actually had to scooch it up front a little bit. And again, just to reiterate, it's not so much the sensor placement, at least in my experience here. I'm not a competitive FPS player. My game right now is really just a lot of destiny, you know. So sensor placement didn't play a big role in this mouse for me but again me scooching it back thinking that's where I just have to be I really noticed the weight a lot more so when I scooched it up towards the front again it bounced out a lot more and I felt more natural in the hand when I scooch it to the back I felt that weight on the back I would personally say that you notice more of the weight difference than the sensor placement difference now the other thing I want to touch on here are the grips all right so you see I have the side ones on let me go on and see if I can peel this back this was like an instant for me so I don't want to ruin these because I'm going to need them on. So you see our grooves right here. They're slanted down. They're not the basic holes like you see in most mice, kind of like hexagon or whatever. So when you're gripping this mouse here, it goes right with it, right? So you're gaming right here. You're gripping. Since those are slanted, you're just automatically going to slide. And you notice it. Like no matter what, number one, it being magnesium, right? So that sweat is going to get on there. And it's going to slide a bit more. It's not really gripping. You notice that on one and two as well. But again, with those grooves, your hands will slide. So instantly, I needed these grips, and it was noticeable, like difference right afterwards. Now that I got the grips on, bam, I can grip it, and it's perfectly fine. So I don't think the grips are looked at so much as an accessory. It's something I think all of us are going to need on this mouse. And going right in line with the mouse being magnesium, yeah, it's very solid. The bottom is plastic, so you do have that flex down there, but again, you're not going to be pressing on the bottom of your mouse. But going in line with that, where I talked about that sensor movement before, again, if you over tighten those screws, it will bow out that plastic right there. I don't know, maybe there should have been a washer or something in there, kind of make it that little more rigid and a little more strong, because if you do over tighten them, again, it does flare out that plastic there. Now, as talking about flex, again, the bottom's plastic the rest is magnesium over here whenever I press it I do see a little bit of movement from the shell to the bottom it's so minor the camera won't even pick it up right here do I feel it when I game not at all I really don't notice it. and again I think with that magnesium being on the side it's not going to be anything that's going to affect us later down the road kind of like we've seen with the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro now I want to talk about one more thing as far as my time using the mouse and gaming with the mouse and then I'll dive into those comparisons so you can decide if this mouse is for you and what really is it but I want to talk about the pyramid or your dongle here now this mouse gets 2k polling rate and again as I stated before 1000 polling rate 2k 8k 4k whatever it is so hard to notice, you know? It's kind of like, yeah, give me the best tech because we got it. Same along with the sensor here. You want that stuff, but again, is it really noticeable? No, I mean, I use an 8K keyboard, a mouse, all sorts of stuff, and you really can't notice the difference. Your internet is going to play a bigger role. Your GPU, your processor, so many things, your monitor, so many things are going to play into role before you can notice something like that. But yes, my time using this mouse was absolutely spot on. No lag, no delays, no hiccups, no nothing again with myself using a wireless headset, um, you know, playing fairly demanding games, 165 hertz monitor, running this 2K and 8K keyboard, never experienced a single hiccup with the wireless. 
or the polling rate or anything absolutely smooth. But what I did have some issues with was the software. Now take this with a grain of salt because again, I had mine quite early. This is more or less for reviewers that had it early, right? We got them shipped before, they've updated firmware, so on and so forth. So they sent me that. I went ahead and updated the firmware of everything here, the software. And after I did that, I just had all sorts of hiccups and just crazy stuff happened with the software. It wouldn't read this, it wouldn't read the mouse. The software was like reading crazy DPIs and it wouldn't read the 2000 polling rate, all sorts of nonsense, you know? So I deleted that, went back to the core software, downloaded that, made sure I had my settings on it and then deleted the software. But the thing I really like is you don't even need this software. Everything can be controlled on the mouse, as you've seen here with a few button combinations as far as your polling rate, your DPI, because you notice there's no DPI button on the mouse. It's a few button selections and then you can cycle through, kind of like we've seen on like glorious mice and stuff. So again, at the end of the day, take that software bug that I had as a reviewer's copy with a grain of salt, because number one, it's probably gonna be fixed for the actual copies released and then you can control everything on the mouse. But I wanted to let you know my situations. All right, so now for the good stuff. I want to talk about some comparisons. Is there only two mice I really think that we can compare this to? The Razer Death Adder V3 Pro, and then of course the Zowie EC2. Now where I want to start is with the weight here. Let me go on and fire up my scale. Now I'm going to weigh this with the grips, because again, I don't look at the grips as an accessory. I think it's something that has to be on this mouse. And when you get yours, I think a lot of people will be able to agree with this. So anyways, let's go on and put our Stormbreaker on a scale, 52.9 grams absolutely awesome to see that here let's go ahead and get the zowie on over here and we're getting 77.6 and then the razor death adder v3 pro we are getting 63.3 so really awesome to see the stormbreaker coming in that lightweight with such a solid build i mean it is premium now of course that's with our grips as well right there which again i stayed over and over i think you're gonna need so let's talk about the shape right here when you put them in your hand what is the stormbreaker well no denying it is a zowie ec3 clone now myself using the razor death adder v3 pro i primarily use the wired one these days because you know my wireless one had some flex on both of my copies and it just drives me nuts but i would say the death adder is more of a safe shape if you're not a big ergoer like the zowie where you curves definitely feel the Death Adder, again, is more safe. It's a little more streamlined. And where you're going to see is on the bottom here. And I want to start with this so you can compare these two. EC, Razor Death Adder. Just look at the swoop over here where your groove is, where your thumb's going to sit. Not as dramatic at all on the Razor. Now, let's go and look at the Stormbreaker here. You see that groove? Exactly like the EC. When you put it over here, you can see it. Bam, right there. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Like I stated, if you're a big Ergo user, you'll love the EC. I love the EC, right? It's, it's a tried and true, it's a copied shape left and right. And that's exactly what the Stormbreaker is. And talking about that groove right there, where I'm stating the Death Adder is a little more safe, the Death Adder V3 Pro, okay? What that does is on the Stormbreaker or the EC, those grooves, it's really gonna lock your grip in right there, okay? Your thumb's gonna sit in there, you're flicking and dipping, you're playing a little fast pace, maybe you're playing competitive FPS, and you wanna really hold that mouse in those positions, bam, it goes into this. Same deal you get with the Stormbreaker here. Your thumb's gonna stay right there. On the Death Adder, myself using this quite a bit lately, you know, going back to the Death Adder, I felt my thumb almost sliding forward a little bit in some instances. So when we talk comparisons, that's the best way to put it right there. It is a shape that if you're not a primary ergo user, maybe it'll take you a little bit to get used to. I, I don't know. That groove right there, you do feel. If you use the Zowie EC series and you really like that, especially the two, you're going to love this. You're going to be right at home. That's what this is. And if you use the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro and you're going to try something like this, it's going to feel a little bit smaller and a little bit more locked in compared to the Death Adder. Now, as far as switches, we're using Omron 20Ms right here, and they are really snappy to the point. I would say with the magnesium here, they feel a little bit firmer as far as the press, but you don't really feel any give. Again, a kind of natural flow right with the buttons. Let me give you a quick listen, and I want you to look at the gap between both of them here. Really none whatsoever. Again, one and two does feel a little bit firmer, but again, that's probably the tension up towards here, which you can press it all the way up there as well. 
and then coming down, it's a really natural press. Again, wherever you press the mouse or the one and two right here, just feels very natural in exactly where or how you would click it. Scroll wheel. I wouldn't say it's firm, but it's also not light as well. Ne never any uh, miss rolls or anything here, because I actually use my scroll wheel to cycle weapons. Never any accidental swipes, whatever. Really, really nice tension there. Side buttons. Again, every button on this mouse and the scroll wheel, the sides as well, everything is clicky right to the point. Nothing feels mushy, nothing feels excessive. Again, right to the point and very natural across the entire mouse. But at the end of the day, the number one deciding factor of this new mouse from Ponage is going to be the price tag. This mouse comes in at 180 bucks. Holy smokes, that is expensive. It's packing everything you want. Again, that great battery life, that great sensor, that great build, the great shape. 180 bucks, there's no stinking denying it. It is absolutely expensive. Now there's a couple ways you can break that apart. Limited edition, they are numbered. I got, what is it, number 30 out of 5,000 of the red one here. So you kind of got a collector's piece. I really like seeing that. And again, you got a really cool, unique product. So that's a lot of what you're paying for. And then of course the magnesium and stuff like that. Can you justify the 180 bucks? Talking to the other two mice you looked at, the Zowie, which comes with a cool dock, or the Razor, which has great tech packed into it, but the build, at least the two copies or three copies I've tested have been a little iffy. Those are 150 bucks. So you're not too far off for a really solid product. It's just crazy to see gaming mice come to this price we're at these days, right? We're seeing it all over the place, not just this one, even with those over there. They're just expensive and you are the only one, no matter what good things I state about a product, you're the only one that can decide, is it worth that high price? So anyways, thank you so much for coming by and watching my review on a new Ponage Stormbreaker Wireless Gaming Mouse. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was able to help you out. If I was, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.